Hello and welcome to a very special episode of the Diabetes Podcast. As you can hear, it sounds a bit different because today I'm with Gary Shiner and we are at the ADA conference and we're gonna talk about all the biggest technology announcements at the convention. There's a lot to talk about from the iPhone app coming from Omnipod and the direct watch with the G7. So Gary, let's get into it. Let's start with direct Apple Watch for the G7. The CEO said at an investor panel, I believe, that that's coming by end of year. Tell me about that. How's that gonna change the lives of patients? Well, I think it's gonna improve the communication capability, so if you don't have your phone nearby, and yeah, you know, there are times you just don't have your phone nearby, uh, you know, it'll still be allowed for fun full functionality, you know, particularly with the hybrid closed loop systems. Yeah, and you know, we were just talking about before, I just realized, like, the Omnipod talks to the G7 on its own for Omnipod 5, right? So if you have that direct to Apple Watch, these are talking to themselves. You can go swimming, you have your blood sugar levels on your watch, these are doing the closed loop, and you're done. DIY me doesn't actually have that. So that's... Almost, cool. almost. You know, when you're in the water, that signal's not gonna reach. You know, exactly. there, there are times the signal between the pod and, and the Dexcom don't reach even in the air. Water, it ain't gonna communicate. No. It's just not gonna happen. You're right. But you know, there are, like I said, anytime you don't have your phone handy, it is nice to know that the system is still functional and operational. Yeah, now let's talk about some Omnipod announcements. Omnipod announced that their iPhone app is with the FDA for 510K clearance. How long does that type of clearance for like a software normally take? Do you, do you have any kind of timeline based off of like the past? It depends on a lot of things. Some of it depends on the time of year and how over, over staff, or understaffed the uh, FDA is. Mm -hmm. But you know, generally, you know, you're looking at like three to nine months on something like that. It's not going to turn around overnight, but you know, hopefully by the end of the year, they will have iPhone compatibility. That's fantastic. I, I'm... It's a long time coming, but yeah. And now they also said something about a custom food feature. To me, that sounds like it could be extended bolus. What do you think that that could be? I, I'm not sure. I hope, I hope it will allow for that. I, I believe it's going to be sort of a preset bolus feature uh, where perhaps it could you know, deliver part now, part later. But you know, we've been teaching people that if you're having a slowly digesting meal, it's not that hard. You just turn your automatic feature off temporarily and do an extended bolus. It's still a very useful feature. You know, who doesn't like pizza and pasta and all these other great foods, but they take a long time to digest. So you, you can still use the extended bolus. You just have to temporarily uh, go back into manual mode to do that. Interesting. So Omnipod also announced through their promotional video, I also saw it at the Tandem booth, that Libre 2 support is coming for these. Well, the Libre 2, technically, you have to tap it. Is this a new type of Libre 2 sensor? No, and it's old technology. You know, it's not as accurate or user-friendly as the Libre 3. Yeah. So I don't know how much uptake that's going to get. You know, the vast majority of people are very happy with Dexcom. Uh, and they're going to continue using that. Uh, if it was Libre 3, you know, it, it, they might pull some people over just for cost reasons. But you know, Dexcom still, it's I, I consider the top of the line sensor, and uh, you know, that's what works with the G5 at this point. Yeah, and to me, it feels like with the Libre 3, you get updates every one minute, which was something pretty cool when I was trying it out. I was like, oh wow, it's actually alerting me a little sooner than Dexcom for certain things. But it also, I also feel like that could change the algorithm a bit, and then it would that would take more time. So, will we be seeing Libre 3 support in the future? Do you think that's going to? Oh, it'll happen. Yeah, and I agree with you. There's some situations where that minute-to-minute -minute update, you know, particularly during during exercise, where your glucose can change pretty rapidly. You know, the problem though is the lag time is longer during exercise than when you're not exercising. So, you may be getting minute-to-minute -minute data, but it may not be reliable. You know, it may not be up to date. Uh, so that there's, there's gonna be a trade-off with that. All right, let's move over to Tandem. What, what are they doing? What is their plan for Moby? What is Moby? Well, you know, fish can get diabetes. This is a pump for fish. No, it's not, I'm kidding. 
<laughs> now, Mo Moby uh, is a, it's a much smaller version of their pump. Uh, it, it, the pump itself adheres directly to the body, similar to an Omnipod, except that instead of having its own built-in infusion cannula, it still has a small strand of tubing and a separate infusion set. So users can replace the infusion site without having to replace the pump and vice versa. Uh, the big, I think, neat feature about this is that it will be entirely programmable through a person's phone. So the pump itself has, has no buttons and it's just the delivery device kind of like Omnipod is. Uh, you know, for people who are looking for a more discreet, not tube less, but 90% less tubing type of a pump, uh, it could be a really good way to go. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy. I feel like there's so many pumps coming out these days. And I just did a video on the future of Medtronic. They are currently acquiring EOFlow, which is a patch pump, and you got this one. And also, Tandem acquired a patch pump company pretty recently. Is this what Moby's coming from, or is that like a completely different project? Uh, so Moby was in development years ago. Okay. So this was uh, long before that. You know, they just had uh, a lot of insight from, from the community, the diabetes community, that they were interested in a smaller device, uh, something more discreet, less tubing, et cetera. Uh, so this, this is their answer to it. Okay, and now tell me about this extended infusion set for Tandem. Well, Medtronic launched an extended wear infusion set last year, and I, I th it's a wonderful set. Yeah, that, that's sort of where the rubber meets the road when it comes to pump therapy, and, and it's often the weak link in pump therapy is the infusion device. Because if the insulin, if you're getting the right amount of insulin at the right time, it still has to absorb consistently and act properly. And if your infusion site or is failing, that just doesn't happen. And it's a major variable that's added to the mix. So Medtronic's extended wear set, doesn't they didn't really change the set, the cannula. What they changed is the insulin that's going into your body. Uh, they made sure that it contains the proper amount of preservative. They filter it so that there are no impurities getting through. And that seems to go much easier on the skin. So the site does last longer and the insulin does absorb more consistently. And it, it is a, it's a tremendous thing. I think it goes way beyond just the convenience of not having to change your set every third day, being able to go up to seven. Uh, it, it, the big difference is the glucose management is more consistent. So Tandem, you know, obviously they, they, have to, they have to catch up with that. They acquired a company uh, over a year ago called Capillary Biomedical and Capillary Biomedical developed a very innovative infusion device where the infusion set itself is dramatically different. It's a highly flexible cannula that doesn't crimp. It doesn't pinch off at all, and it has like a coil running through it to prevent that from happening. Uh, it, it has multiple perforations, so the insulin comes out almost like a sprinkler effect at multiple points along the length of the cannula. So that combined with you know, better adhesive at the site, and also a, a special lining in the tube to prevent preservative leakage. Uh, their early studies from, Provent, from uh, capillary bio were showing that the insulin would actually absorb better the longer the set was used. They were going into the seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth days, and the insulin was actually absorbing quicker than it did early on, which is the opposite of what we usually see. So Tandem acquired that company, and they're working on you know, they have to perform studies on it. They have to submit to the FDA. You know, they're hopeful that you know, sometime next year they'll be able to bring that to market. I'd like it today, but you know, I'm ready. Have to, yeah. yeah. And I've seen the inserter for it. It's really nice. It's really quick and easy to use. That's incredible. I am ready for extended infusion sets. So one that is here is the Medtronic, which you brought up. Is there data on that? Like, have we learned anything new about that? Uh, yeah, we've learned about uh, not only the insulin stability, but glucose level consistency uh, is better. You know, less variation in glucose levels uh, with the extended wear set. You know, it, it's a 90 degree set. You know, it's very similar to uh, you know, the inset that they've had for years or the Mio that they've used. It's similar to that, but with these improvements, the insulin that gets into the body doesn't cause negative reactions the way we see now. It, it's really the insulin itself that causes a lot of the issues. 
It's got impurities in it. It, it has chemicals in it to maintain it, you know, its integrity. And you know, those are all foreign to the body. And the body mounts reactions to that and it mucks things up. You know? Are we going to see this with Omnipod, do you think, an extended wear for that? Is that possible, you think? It's possible. I mean, they're going to have to change the cannula insertion. And, you know, as we've seen with, you know, Insolette's attempts to uh, sync up with the G7, uh, to change the pods themselves is a major undertaking. It's not as, it's not like just changing the software in an app. You know, for them to get the G7 synchronization, the pods have to be rebuilt and re-engineered. It's going to be the same thing with a, a new cannula for them. So, you know, what is sort of an advantage in that, you know, the pods are disposable and it's easy to update to a new one, building new pods and changing your whole assembly process and all of that, it, that's a major, major amount of work. Okay, wow. Let's move on to Islet. One of the new players, I've done some videos on this channel already. I spoke to the CEO, I did a whole hands-on demo. Tell me about the data they've been releasing at ADA. Let's, let's start with the, the pump that they're using right now, which is just an insulin pump, and then let's move over to that dual hormone pump that they've been working on for years and, and hopefully is coming in the future. Let's start with the other one. Well, first off, I haven't had a chance to try the system yet. I don't have any patients using it yet. Usually I like to get some personal experience with things first, but what I can tell you, uh, they, they found, they've struck an interesting balance between kind of cost and benefit. Not cost in dollar terms, but cost in terms of the work that we have to put in, the effort, the burden it places on the user. The burden, they've really minimized the, the burden, not just for the user of the device, but their healthcare provider. I spend so much time working with patients fine tuning their basal settings, their carb ratios, their correct, all this stuff. There's a lot of work that goes into that. The ILET requires none of that. Zero. So for clinicians who don't have the time or expertise to do that, it's going to make transitioning patients to pump therapy and closed loop therapy infinitely easier. There's still some training and education that's needed. The only inputs that the user makes is at meal times, just to tell the system I'm either having my normal meal or a meal that's smaller or larger than usual. That's it. So you don't have to carb count precisely. You still have to be able to recognize a big, small, and medium meal. But the whole notion, like I'm, I'm going to a spaghetti warehouse for lunch, my carb count is not going to be all that accurate. But if I tell it it's a large meal, presumably it'll make adjustments. So from a cost, from a user burden and a clinician burden standpoint, they've solved a lot of issues. Where they come up, I think, a little short is in the benefit. The glucose management that can be achieved with that system, it's good but not great. You know, it doesn't quite meet the standards we've seen from the other commercially available automated delivery systems and definitely comes up short of the DIY systems. So for people who are, who are they're good with just decent control and not having to think about their diabetes as much, it'll be great. You know, for those who are looking for the next level of management, who really want to manage intensively, they're probably going to be disappointed. They'd be better off with one of the other systems. Yeah, so that we just spoke about one of the pumps that you know, may be on the, the lower end of time and range. Still a great pump in, in its own ways. Now let's go to the pump that they hope to create that could theoretically be at the top of the chain, which is bihormonal, which would have both insulin and glucagon to kind of keep you up and down. Have they brought out data with that pump? Yeah, to use a phrase I love, it, it really does think more like a pancreas. This is a system that is truly emulating the way a healthy pancreas works. And a, you know, it's a constant balance between the insulin infusion, lowering the glucose, glucagon production to bring the glucose level up. It's like a house that has a heat and an air conditioning system or a cruise control that's hitting the brakes or the gas, depending on the situation. Now, right now we have systems that will hit the gas pedal, drive the blood sugar down, but have no way to apply brakes. So glucagon is the brakes to the system. You can be so much more aggressive with your driving if you've got brakes than if you don't. 
You know, you can get up to speed where you want to and not have to worry about coasting to a halt. So having glucagon in the mix allows the algorithm to be much more aggressive with the management and still minimize hypoglycemia. Because as soon as the glucose is trending down and it predicts hypo may, de hypo may develop, it can infuse glucagon. Now one drawback with this is it's gonna require two separate infusion sites, two tubes, uh, in order for that to work. Yeah, they'll probably figure out a way to minimize the, the look and the inconvenience of it, but it is gonna require two separate uh, infusions. Yeah, well, Gary, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. This very special episode. I've got episodes coming out every Monday, and I'm here covering a ton of um, news here. So you check out all those videos on YouTube. And also, you should check out Gary's book, Think Like a Pancreas. I read it at early diagnosis. It really helped me get to where I am today. And yeah, I'll have a link to that down in the description. Until next time, I'm Justin, and I'll tech you later.